In this video, we'll be covering command line arguments using argparse. First thing I need to do is import the arg argparse module. And once we do that, we need to set up our parser. So I'm going to create a new variable called parser. And we need to call our argparse module um, the argument parser class. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in the description. And we're going to get these start and end dates just like we did in the get the previous um, get opt video. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add an argument. And the first argument we're going to be adding is the start date. We're going, to be using the, we're going to start off by using the long form, so we need a double dash. And we go ahead and pass in our help message. And we're going to make a similar one, except this one's going to be for the end date. And the last thing that we're going to need is for the parser to parse the arguments. So I'm going to create a new variable called args. And then we'll just go ahead and print these out. And so we're going to go ahead and run this, um, set a start date. We'll just make a couple dummy dates. It's like we have a error here. Um, so this is supposed to be parser .add argument. We're calling the add argument method of the uh, parser, um, we're not assigning a value, so um, just need to quick that fix that mistake. And then if we go ahead and rerun this, so we should be getting our um, start and end dates. Uh, so the arguments itself, once we parse the arguments, that gives us a class of namespace, um, basically an object with um, these, the starting and end dates is the object properties. So what we need to do is um, we can use the dot syntax to get our values. And so since we passed in help text, we can also uh, do that. So using the help command line option, that'll give us a nice printout of what we need to pass in. Now, similar to what we did with get out, we had um, a long form. So we can also use a short form and that would just be the first argument um, in the add argument method. So I'm going to create a new argument and then that one's going to be a single dash S for start date. And we'll also use a dash E for the end date. So if I save this and run it, so we can use dash S and then pass in a date. And so we get the exact same result as we did by passing the long form. ArgParse makes it very easy to make a field required. So let's go ahead and make a required field out of start date. So we just need to pass in the required parameter. And if we were to do that and then remove this, so we're going to remove the start date only passing in the end date, that's going to give us an error. However, since we only did that with the start date, um, our end date is going to return none. So another, another option we have is we can set a default. And so what I'm going to do for the end date is set the default date to um, being right now. So we're going to go ahead and import date time. And I'm going to set a variable called current date. And we're going to set that to the current date right now. And then we can just add a default parameter here. So we need current date and then we need to call the string for time method. Stir f time. And we just need to give it our format. So we're going to give it percent %y for a four digit year. So year, month, and day. And let's go ahead and save and rerun. So yeah, now we have a current date as our end date because that was the default and we did not pass any specific end date. Um, if we were to try and do that again, uh, if we passed it in, it would not use the default, it would override the default. 
So this is a quick example. It's very quick and easy to use argparse to set up your command line arguments. It gives us some validation as to make a field required. We can use both the short and long form. And we can also add help text. And we can also set defaults for command line arguments that we pass into a file.